to find out what triggered the violence on the 3rd of May last year or how it happened. There is no point in going back on that. I am sure that our viewers are much better informed than I am and I'm not underestimating their capacity to analyze things. Now, why are we holding this discussion on Manipur today and that too after such a long time? I think there is need to discuss Manipur because as I said, it is almost a year that the turmoil is continuing. What is of concern is the future of the youth, whether it is the, whether it is the youth in the valley or the youth in the hills. Politics has its own place, whether it is electoral politics or societal politics. What we all should be particularly concerned is the future of the next generation Manipuris. By Manipuris, I mean people in the hills as well as the people in the valley. It is high time this violence ends because it concerns the future of the young generation. I expect this discussion to be a civilized debate. The basic idea is to see whether both sides can sit down and talk peace. Basically, what we are going to discuss in the next hour is the road ahead. I welcome all the panelists we have with us. Dr. Angomcha Bimola Koizam from the Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi. With me in the studios in Guwahati is Mr. Paulian Lal Haukip, BJP leader and Manipur MLA representing the Saikot constituency. Mr. Dr. Homen Thongzam, Professor at IZNTU joins me from Imphal and I also have with me Dr. Tonkolal Haukip, Assistant Professor at the Center for Study of Law and Governance, JNU, joining me from New Delhi. Before I go to the discussion, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the straight to a big breaking story that we have uh, broken only uh, less than an hour ago. There is heavy firing in Imphal East, the visuals Speak for itself, viewers. All right, uh, there is heavy firing going on at the Wangke Koizam Lekai area in Imphal East. Uh, viewers, uh, we have been told by security sources that a group of heavily armed men uh, and, and uh, 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 security guards posted that the residents of the additional LCO of Imphal East. The firing is going on between a group of heavily armed gunmen and the security guards posted at the residence of the additional SP Imphal East located in the Wangke Koizam Lekai area in Imphal East. Now, the army has been called in and the troops of the Assam Rifles have already arrived the area to take control of the situation. What triggered the firing is not known. We are also getting unconfirmed reports that two civilians have been injured in the crossfire. Uh, we are waiting for more details on this big developing story. That means what this suggests, as the pictures on your screens show, viewers, that the situation in Manipur continues to be volatile. This time, this is not a gunfight between uh, people in the Imphal Valley and, and those in the hills of Manipur. It is going on in the Imphal Valley itself between uh, uh, armed gunmen and security forces posted apparently at the residence of the additional, MP, MP, additional SP in Fall East. We're waiting for details. These are very, very sketchy information that have come down to us. Uh, let's go back to our panelists uh, 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 and, and, and begin this discussion, Manipur, the road ahead. Let me put it on record, viewers. We have four eminent panelists today. Mr. Paulin Lal Haukip is a BJP leader and MLA from Saikot. We have Dr. Angomsha Bimola Koizam, professor at the JNU. We have Dr. Homen Tongjam, a very respected professor at the IZNTU in Imphal. And we have another very well-known commentator, Dr. Tankolal Haukip, 
uh, pro, uh, assistant professor at the Center for Law and Governance at the JNU. Let me put on record that I had invited representatives of the Manipur government. In fact, a Manipur senior Manipur government spokesman uh, was supposed to be on the show, but uh, uh, for whatever reasons have decided uh, against being on this discussion. That is only for the record. But we have uh, representatives who are well equipped to deal with the debate today, Manipur, uh, the road ahead. Let me begin with you, Mr. Paulin Lal Haukip. Uh, you know, how do you feel, first of all, the budget session is starting uh, tomorrow in Imphal. You are an elected representative. You have nine other colleagues who belong to the Kuki Jo community, 10 MLAs belonging to the Kuki Zo uh, community who have been uh, not been able to participate in the discussions and raise the voice of the people on the floor of the house because that is your primary job is to represent the issues of the people uh, in the August house that is the state assembly. First of all, how do you feel before I go into the topic? Uh, the feeling is one of devastation and uh, one of anger that we could not represent our people in <clears throat> important matters of state. And uh, it is very unfortunate that the situation has been allowed to continue this far and escalate this high. And uh, <clears throat> there, is no, there is no forgiving people who are responsible for this. Right. Now, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, basically, let me, let, me go for the, let me bring the first comments from all our panelists before we go into the topic. Let me go to Dr. Homen Thongzam, uh, Professor at the IZNTU, joining me from Imphal this evening. Professor uh, Thongzam, uh, Professor, uh, we, we, are, we are sitting here to discuss the road ahead, uh, but unfortunately, uh, a short while ago, a heavy firing broke out in the heart of Imphal. Now, that is again suggesting that it is 10 months now, going to be one year, and the state uh, uh, is in turmoil because of this situation. How do you feel as an academic? How do you look at the future? Yeah, at the moment, the feeling is of, you know, grimness. I mean, all around us, a kind of black blackness has blanketed Manipur. And it is turmoil. It's not only happening today. If you have been following like uh, two or three days back, there has been again a sort of conflict uh, within Imphal Valley. So the future, I mean, at the moment, we cannot protect, uh, predict, but we are hoping for the best. We all need to come together to find a solution. This is my comment. Right. Uh, let me go to Dr. Thangkolal Haukip. Uh, Dr. Haukip, uh, you know, you have been watching the situation in uh, Manipur from a distance. You are located in Delhi. Uh, you have been commenting uh, and analyzing the situation. Now, my, my quick question is, as you've heard Dr. Homen Thangzam, he said that uh, he, he, feels, he feels disturbed. It's a grim situation. And uh, Dr. Thangzam has said that there is need for everybody to uh, come together and work towards peace. Now, my question to you, Dr. Thangkolal Haukip, uh, the divide has become wide. But nothing is impossible. And now, why can't two sides, that is uh, the Cookie Zo community and the Metes who have been living together for generations, why can't they sit together and work out a solution? What is the obstacle? Okay, I understand, uh, Dr. Haukip, that one ca you cannot come to, the Cookie Zo leaders cannot come to Imphal to talk, or for that matter, the Metis leaders perhaps cannot go to Churachanpur to hold the talks. But what prevents them from talking at a at a neutral location. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. And this is the first time that I appear for uh, Nordis Live TV. Uh, and congratulations for the six year of this uh, continuance of this TV. And we thank need you. Uh, a forum like this to address and debate regarding various issues which concern uh, many of us in the Northeast. And, uh, uh, tonight, I would like to say by, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, addressing this pertinent uh, problem, uh, of course, as you have asked, uh, all leaders can come together and sit and talk. But uh, who will organize this? You know, it's definitely the prime minister or the home minister who should bring together 
whether it's the chief minister or whether it's the civil society organizations of Manipur to come together. So unless the uh, someone in Delhi initiated this, I think uh, at the state level, it's impossible uh, to organize because uh, the two communities uh, in these states are armed, you know, uh, in uh, their own respective place, not to, uh, you know, bulge any kind of, uh, you know, a, a peaceful settlement of certain uh, things, uh, uh, unless it is the way they like it. So it's upon uh, the union, uh, home minister or the prime minister to look upon these issues. And secondly, coming to, uh, you know, the issues of Manipur, I would say that uh, I would look through the lens of, of, of disparity, right? Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Bimol uh, would agree uh, or disagree with me, but Manipur, as you look into it, uh, it's very clear you have uh, two geographical spaces. You have the valley in the center of the state and surrounded by the hills. So there is a huge disparity in terms of development, in terms of so many things. Unless we look into this disparity, I think addressing the future of this Manipur would be impossible. Whether it's legal, whether it's development, whether it's cultural, I think this disparity has to be recognized and addressed at the first this is my uh, uh, first comment for the right. evening. Right. Uh, let, me, let me come to once again. Uh, let me ask my producers whether uh, Dr. Bimal Akoizam, is he there? Hello? Okay, I, I can't hear my, on my EP, so if that can be fixed. Uh, okay, uh, let, me, let me come to Mr. Paulilal Haukip. Uh, uh, Mr. Haukip, see, uh, you belong to the same party that is ruling the state of Manipur. Uh, only thing is that you, will, you represent the hill people, that is your constituency, and that yes. is the large area that you <clears throat> come from. Uh, and, uh, but you are a Manipuri. I thought I was, but uh, we have been told we are not. Who said that? Nobody has said that, as far as I know. A Manipuri should have the right to live in uh, the capital city. We have been driven out. Our people have been driven out and now, killed. Now, now Mr. Haukip, uh, I have got a straightforward question because Dr. Homen Tongzam, he said that, he very rightly said, we are all uh, disturbed by what is happening in Manipur and that is the purpose of this debate. Now the question is, suppose who, as, uh, as Dr. Thankolal Haukip said, who initiates this initiative to bring the two sides together? Is it only the government who can do this or is it the civil society who can do that? Suppose the chief minister of Manipur, uh, decides to hold or invites everybody at a neutral location, not in Manipur, because somebody has to take the initiative. Will the 10 Kukijo MLAs be willing to attend such kind of a discussion? This is just a straight question to you. Osbir, uh, let me uh, give you an allegorical uh, reference, a uh, story. Uh, in a school, let's say, you know, somebody bashes up somebody weaker than him, and then he tries to initiate a peace uh, reconciliation uh, process, would that be good? Or should the principal intervene? That is my short answer. But uh, to elaborate a little, <clears throat> this conflict, I would not call it a conflict. It is an ethnic cleansing drive by radicalized group. I'm not saying all Maitais are radicals. It is an ethnic cleansing drive by a radicalized group supported by the chief minister and the Rajya Sabha MP. We all know that. Now, I don't know what went into the mind of the center to allow this, to prolong for this long. So, so you, 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 you have been allegorical. You said if somebody, if there is a clash in a school among students, it's the principal who has to intervene. Now, the principal in Manipur, don't you think it is the chief minister who is the principal no, I'm in Manipur? Referring to, I'm, I'm referring uh, to the principal in India. Okay, you are, referring to the, you are referring to the principal in India. So you are expecting the prime minister to call, him, call, call both the sides together. 200, more than 200 people have died. More than 70,000 houses have been burned. More than 300 villages destroyed. And if a prime minister doesn't still find time to attend to that, I don't know what could be more important 
in the state of uh, in the uh, governance of a state okay let me let me i, I get your point let me let me go to dr homen uh, thangzam Doc, dr thangzam uh, you know we have seen we have, we have seen very uh, lot of lot of situations a uh, lot of uh, issues in the northeast being resolved uh, we have seen the government of India is talking to an insurgent group that is the NSC and IM, which started with a demand for sovereignty and now talking about other issues. But they, when they started the talks, their demand was that of sovereignty. We have talked with the Ulfa. Ulfa Independent is still uh, 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 outside the purview of the talks, but there has been an accord which has been signed with the Ulfa. Uh, there has been an accord 1986 signed with the Mijo National Front. There was accord signed with any number of insurgent groups. My question is, these are two communities of one state within the Union of India. Why is it so difficult for the civil society of the two uh, uh, communities to resolve? Uh, do you think people do not want peace? Everybody loves peace. I, as a teacher who has been teaching in this so-called tribal university, where my majority of my students are from the Huki community, I miss them. I'm very concerned about their future. When the ethnic cleansing, I mean, this is the terminology I find, you know, a bit, uh, you know, difficult to digest. Should we allow the cleansing to continue or not? Morally impunging. When the Kukinaga conflict erupted in the early 90s, there was one community, the Maiti community intervened, played the role of the peacemaker, and the struck to the conscience of both communities to come together and give up violence. Uh, we are yet to find someone to mediate this, whatever you know, term you call it, this violence. We have to end. And on the part of the civil society organizations, they need to keep in touch. But the right. situation is thus, uh, when the society has become so militarized, even the civil society loops are, you know, held under the gunpoint. Right. On the personal lines, like friends and the, you know, friends who have worked together, we have worked together a lot on many issues. And I recall one incident when one of my friends who belong to this community asked me, why are we so foolish? When these fights are going on, what the economies of what the communities, economies of the communities are greatly affected. And this has been taken over by new players. It's affecting all of us. Right. So a moment has to come, whether we like it or not, we have to come together. That's right. what I strongly believe in. Right. Right. Professor, I, 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 I'm coming back to you in a moment. I am now joined by Dr. Angomsa Bimola Koizam. Professor Bimola Koizam uh, uh, is one of the leading voices uh, in the country. He is teaching at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. Uh, Professor Binol, Bimola Koizam, uh, you know, we have heard, uh, we have got a very eminent panel, Mr. Paulenlal Haukip, Dr. Tangkolal Haukip, Dr. Homen Tangzam. Uh, and you, uh, Dr. Homen Thangzam was saying that now, you know, uh, can you hear me, Bimol? Okay, Professor Bimol Akhoizam cannot hear me. Bimol, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but your video is playing some other channels in Assamese or Bengali, so the two sounds are mixing up here. Okay, there is uh, audio leakage in the in the pcr that is the reason uh, but 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 i can hear you loud and clear uh, bimol uh, you know how how can the two sides come together who will bell the cat that is the question we are discussing today bimol uh, you know how how should we bring the two sides together to talk? Now, who will take the initiative? Is it the civil society? We have not seen the government act uh, much as far as uh, bringing the two sides together for talks are concerned. Now, are we dependent on the civil society? How do we move forward? It was where, uh, if I hear you correctly, that, you know, 
you're asking me about how this um, crisis can be uh, sort of ended or solved? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think the first and foremost, I've been repeating this from the day one, that the government of India must take responsibility for the entire thing to fix it. Uh, you know, people have been uh, accusing each other, but the fact of the matter remains, whoever is in touch with the ground reality as well as the pronouncements of the officials, right from the day one, we don't know who is in charge of the uh, law and order situation in the state. I often suspect that the state government has become an scapegoat. Uh, so in this matter, I would expect the prime ministers to call all their MLAs in BJP and make them sit down and try to uh, you know, tell them that loss of life, and they, these are representatives of the people, they should be squarely held responsible for the state of affairs that has happened in the last nine or ten months. I am told that even these, uh, some of these cookie ministers are clearing files online and you are playing a game on the lives of the people. So the government must function properly and openly and transparently and all the members of the assembly, particularly of the ruling, must take responsibility for restoring. But after all, they are the government and the union minister, union government should not, uh, you know, allow to make people confused about who is in charge of the situation. Uh, they must ask these MLAs to sit together and talk. The ruling party's MLAs and uh, must meet irrespective of their communities. I think that is the biggest way to move forward. In the meantime, the Indian state must use its legitimate powers to rein in the violence and that's the way to move forward to begin with these two steps are very important on the third part maybe then the government can also help to open up a second track negotiations with some of the respectable figures from the northeast i have suggested in other media channels ratan siam and niketu iralu uh, and people like Janu Barua can be a mediator uh, for the civil society people to talk. I think that is necessary for us to move ahead. Last but not the least, but some of the grievances. You know that the peace cannot be achieved without addressing the question of justice. And when we talk about justice, I have maintained that all the grievances of the communities in questions, including the Maites, you must know that people don't talk about it often, that Maites have genuine grievances and injustices being done to them historically. And this crisis must be an opportunity for us to address that too. I think right. that is the four steps that I would imagine how a normalcy can be restored in our state. Right. Uh, I will come back to you, Professor Akwizam. Let me let me take a view from you, Mr. Paulel al uh, The first point that uh, Professor Bimol, I think these are very, very mature suggestions coming in from all the panelists uh, tonight. Sense. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Bimol Akwizam has suggested that, uh, you know, the ruling party, that is the BJP, of which you are also a, a member and an MLA. Uh, now, the point is, I mean, have you asked your central leadership to do something like this where... You, you have not resigned from the party. You are a party MLA and the BJP is a supposed to be a disciplined political party. Now, why is such a meeting not taking place uh, somewhere outside Manipur? Why, what is the difficulty in all the elected representatives talking and trying to, uh, uh, trying to sort of uh, 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 work towards a solution? What is the problem? Uh, Wasbir, the problem is uh, if it is, if it were a class, a mere class between communities and the government were to play a neutral role, it could have been ended, contained within the first two, three days. Where it has prolonged this for 10 months of a neck cleansing. This is precisely because the state government and the head of the government 
is biased. And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. He has been creating this whole narrative, even before the troubles began, of maligning the Kuki community. And him being a leader of the uh, Meitei community and the chief minister, a lot of gullible, uh, ignorant, uh, ignorant masses believed him and his false narratives maligning the particular community, the Kuki community. Now, when you have such a government aiding and abetting the radical forces that he created, this is what we are seeing. The result is what we are seeing. Now, uh, let me come to uh, one of the issues rightly raised by Professor uh, Akhoizan. For peace, we need justice. And these troubles, despite the spark being on the 3rd of May, is the result of long-standing historical injustices, perceived, some perceived, and some real. And those needs to be addressed. For example, <clears throat> Wasbir, uh, uh, just to, to find solution to the problem, we have to understand the problem, right? So if you look back, okay. I'll, just allow me to uh, yeah. finish this. Yeah. Because I'm giving the context in which the uh, conflict began. <clears throat> we, are, we have this tendency of starting and looking at things from the flash point only. But there's a history behind it. The Delimitation Commission, for example, have recommended more representation for the hill areas. That is not allowed. The Hill Areas Committee has not been allowed to function. The MLR and LR Act, which was not supposed to be yeah. extended to the Hill Areas, uh, was being... I'll have, to, I'll have to go for a break. Uh, I'll have to go for a break, commercial break. Uh, we have got fixed times for that, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Haukip. I'm sorry about that, but I'll come back to you to allow you to finish your sure. point. Let's go for a short break. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Origin glycerin or hoite prostu, Savlon glycerin soap. Heat color tapunak diye soft skin, haru Savlon horoikya. Butter hola good day. Kihor karane koka? Horolo yalohi ahise. Ako sa kabolo hi pam. Saho logot besi bhal lage. Karan good day, yummy butter ase. अरे राजू बेटा तूने नई बाइक ले ली ऐसे ही तरक्की करो खूब आगे बढ़ो बेटा अरे चाचे सिर्फ मैं नहीं मेरे जैसे 25 करोड़ लोग गरीबी से बाहर निकल चुके हैं और मैं गारंटी देता हूँ कुछ सालों में अपने देश से गरीबी पूरी तरह खत्म हो जाएगी गारंटी कैसी गारंटी अरे चाचा मोदी की गारंटी अच्छा अब तो गारंटी पूरी होने की भी गारंटी है <laughs> मुसीबतों की छुट्टी मार हाथ कौन सॉफ्ट और हुरे कित कोरी रखी वोर बाबे 90% नेचुरल ओरिजिन कंटेंट रे प्रस्तुत सैफलॉन हैंड वॉश मार हाथ दुखन और लॉय चौथनो स्वीट सॉल्टी स्पाइसी ब्रिटानिया 50-50 गोल माल सर रान के ने कोई बनाओ गोल माल कोड़ा सर हम अपुनी माँ किमान भाल पाए माँ Iman. Haru, it is why. Biscuit at Kaljirar Samut Karchal, Britannia 5050 Gold Mall. Vandia International School, a premier residential co-educational school located in Guwahati with state-of-the-art infrastructure. Uh, welcome back. Uh, let me go to uh, Dr. Homen Thangzam. I'll come to you, Dr. Thangolal Haukip. 
and once again to uh, Mr. Paula Lahokip and Dr. Bimola Kizam. But first, I want to go to Dr. Homen Tongzam. Dr. Tongzam, uh, is Dr. Tongzam there? Okay, uh, doc, Dr. Dr. Tongzam, uh, you know, I mean, 10 months is a very long time. We have seen the state government or whether it is the state government, whether it is the others, but we have not seen any serious attempt at bringing the two sides together. Unless, unless the two sides sit together, I think this kind of violence is never going to end. It is not benefiting uh, the common man. Uh, and we are three academics sitting here, all top academics from Manipur and a very senior political leader. Now the point is, aren't we, uh, don't, is it not, uh, I mean, incumbent upon us, all of you, to walk towards a solution to save the future of the young people in Manipur? I agree with you totally. Our concern should be the future of the common people and the youth. That's very much needed. Instead of militarizing them, instead of teaching them to take up arms, they could, if given the choice, can pursue a very different path that would be helpful for them. Now, where have Only we gone wrong? Not. Where have we gone wrong? Where have we gone wrong? Who is going to demilitarize them? Is it exactly. not the responsibility of the state? It is on us. The community has to decide. We have to abandon the language of violence. The moment we start the conversation in the language of violence, there will be no going back. There has to come a time, a point in which we have to converse together. Irrespective of whether you belong to the Puki or the Naga or the Ahomia or Manipuri or Maite, ultimately we should give up the language of violence. We have to come together. And to do this, I believe, yes, the role and responsibility of the state is very, very important. And equally, we are also important. We have to have the conversation. We have to talk to each other. Like I was mentioning the incident, one particular incident, in which one of my colleagues spoke to me and asked me, why are we being so foolish? We are losing everything. Not only the future of the youth, the economy is devastated. So we need to come together and to do this, we need the will. Right. Beyond the rational of injustice or justice, we need to develop this will now, to form right. a kind of will. Well, yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Thankolal Haukip, uh, you know, uh, I'm coming to you right now, Dr. Bimola Koizam. Uh, Dr. Thankolal Haukip, uh, do you think the civil society, as we have seen, is also sharply polarized? Uh, and when the civil society is polarized, when the state government is not taking any initiative to bring the two sides together, what do we do? Uh, yes, uh, now, now, you know, uh, we are having a Lok Sabha elections, so everybody is already on an election mode. In a small state like Manipur, where there are only two Lok Sabha seats, do you think anybody is concerned? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me clarify how I see uh, groups, yeah. you know, I don't call them civil society groups uh, in Nordis. Most of us, you know, these groups are mainly community based organizations. So, uh, in academic sense, I call them community based organizations rather than civil society organizations because they always represent uh, the view of the ethnic groups and rather than the so called civil society, right? That we conceptualize in academics, uh, academic discussion, and others for the last uh, three decades. So uh, I see that. And uh, right now the chief minister or the Manipur government is not in, uh, in a position to bring in the, the three communities together. As I've said earlier, uh, you know, there are different uh, views on this and it's only the New Delhi, uh, you know, government at New Delhi that uh, can bring these people together, force them or even uh, use certain constitutional mechanism to uh, to to uh, coach them into terms, so it's only new that they can do it. And before uh, you know uh, that, I would like to point out, as I have indicated in my uh, first you know response, that uh, how to address this disparity, right? 
there is a disparity in, uh, in Manipur which needs to be looked. And out of this disparity comes injustice, which my colleague uh, Bimol also said, without addressing this injustice, you know, there can't be peace in Manipur. So let me quote what the University Grants Commission Chairman uh, and or former Vice Chancellor of JNU, uh, Mamidala Jagvis Kumar, said yesterday. He said that uh, the Central University entrance test undergraduate is, uh, can be conducted in a hybrid mode. And this can benefit students, particularly from those from rural areas. You know, uh, Chirushanpur has been uh, without internet uh, for the last 13 years. Today is the 14th day. And this has been, uh, you know, suspended continuously for two days, you know, because out of those, uh, you know, troubles yeah. that we all know. Yeah, right. You know, give, give me another two minutes, I will complete this explanation. And uh, and because of this, many of the online and other transactions as well as online classes for the students are uh, totally cut off. And you may have seen the viral picture of one village volunteer who was uh, studying in his uh, you know, a uh, duty post. So that is the condition of uh, a Chirzanpur right now. And uh, right. looking to Imphal, in the day before, you would see that uh, there is a bomb in DM College, which, uh, uh, you know, blasted and one person was dead. The UCM office was set ablaze. Yet there is no legal actions taken uh, in this Imphal area. So looking to the disparity of how these governance mechanisms are rolled out uh, in the hills as well as in uh, in uh, in Imphal, right? Just because uh, there is a suspension of one uh, head constable, you know, uh, there is such an uproar. Right? Why there was such an uproar right. for? Right. Uh, you know, the will, suspension because let, let me, me complete. Let uh, me complete. We will, because, I will. I will. Uh, I will. If you look into let the me go concerns to, of yes, uh, uh, Lal, just hold your thoughts. Uh, let me let me go to let me go to Dr. Bimal Akoyzam. Uh, Bimal, you know, when Bimal, can you hear me? First of all, I think you can hear me now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can. I can hear you. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Now the point is, uh, uh, Dr. Bimal Akoyzam, you see, when when we are we are we are talking such in a reasonable manner, everybody is making their point, but there is a lot of reason, lot of sense. All all of you are making a lot of sense. Now, why can't academics take the initiative? Now, civil society, as Thankolal said is he, you'd like to call them as community-based organizations. When you are community-based organizations, you're obviously it is not rocket science that community's interest will come first. Obviously, any community-based organization, community's interest will come first. Now, the government is not, not in a position to do much. Now, people like you, people like you, people like uh, Dr. Homen uh, Thangzam or Thangkolal Haukip, or uh, there are a lot of other people senior academics representing Manipur. And there is one state where has has produced so many top ranking academics in the country. Why can't all of you take an initiative to sit together and, and start the track to process automatically with no one telling you to do so? No, I think uh, it's, it's nice to uh, look at that site as one potential uh, scope for building peace, but unfortunately, our world of academia are also involved in a in, in lot of disinformation campaign associated with this phenomenon, this crisis that we have. Uh, but before I go into the potential for academics per se, uh, if I may, you know, our Honorable MP, uh, uh, Mr. Paulin Haukib, uh, had said Emily. about the government being communal and so on. You know, I, I just, that's, that's, that's an uh, accusation that has been coming in. And there is no doubt that the government is uh, found wanting in terms of its capacity to rein in the violence and, and, and bring about normalcy. There is no second opinion about that, as we can see by now. But I think when we accuse this government of being communal, that is what I said. There are two cookie ministers who are still clearing the fight. They are part of the government. You understand what I'm saying? It is a BJP government, and the cookies are still a cabinet minister in this government under Sri Biren Singh. So when we say that this government is communal, then we have to have uh, a clarity on why is that the cookie minister are still part of this government, and why is that if this is a BJP government, why is that the some of these MLAs take a position and accuse this government, BJP government, of being communal and resigned? 
you know, that, that would have sent a clear message to whoever is playing this game on the lives of the ordinary citizens, whether it be that, uh, you know, ST community or non-ST community. As these are some of the concerns we have and right. about the injustices. I've said that this is the foundation of bringing peace. Whichever community and their grievances, perceive or real, must be addressed. And right. I, as as I've reminded also that, you know, the Métis too, like other communities, have grievances. Right. And historical injustices being meted out to them. Absolutely. Normally, we don't talk about these things vis-a-vis uh, -vis with the Métis. Uh, but coming back to academics, they are part of the civil society. The unfortunate part of the crisis, as you know, was where when the conflict is only at the level of the political, it is easier to solve. Unfortunately, it has been allowed to go deeper into the societal level. And there is a deep sense of uh, hatred and uh, misinformation, disinformation. So it's become very difficult. But my suggestion would be that the government must come in first I have been suggesting right. this from the day one. If the prime minister calls all their MLAs and make them sit down and talk over and solve the differences. I think uh, Prime Minister Modi is a very powerful man. We know his word will not be pressed aside by anybody in his party. That's my belief. Right, right. And I will, yes, I will... we have started among some academics. We do talk. We do exchange opinions. But the, the schism has so much deepened these days it's it, it's going to take uh you know efforts from all departments all sides from the political absolutely parties i i hope dr bimola koizam i hope that initiative from the academia uh, comes because at the end of the day it's only the academics which have the power and they have the understanding to filter out uh, uh you know uh schism, the, to remove the schism and talk sense. Uh, I will come to you, Dr. Uh, sorry, Mr. Paul Lal Haukip. Let's go to our reporter, uh, uh, Lucky Boy, who is standing by in Imphal. But before that, we have reactions from Dr. M. Kula Chandra, the father of uh, Amit Moirang Tem, the additional SP operations of Imphal West uh, or Imphal East. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, Imphal East. Imphal East. Uh, in whose residence that massive firing took place. Let's hear what the additional SP Amit Moirang Tem's father, Dr. M. Kula Chandra, had to tell us a short while ago. Let's play that bite. Uh, actually, today around 7 p.m. in the evening, uh, all of us are inside the room except my uh, son, who is, a who, is a who is a police officer. Then suddenly some arm... Um, um, people, uh, we don't know who we don't know who are they. Some unknown persons. They came and they knocked the, our gates like anything. So they bang our main door, main gate like anything. So we suspect that something will is going to happen. So we kept quiet inside the room. Then suddenly they broke the main gate and then they all entered inside and they're asking me to open our door. So I said, hey, what has happened? Okay, definitely I will open the door. But what has happened? What has happened? Suddenly they started firing. Okay. Firing and they started destroying all our vehicles. No? There are four vehicles parked in the uh, courtyard. So all are destroyed. No? All are destroyed. And then as they started firing, we all ran in, went inside the room and we were uh, seeking some shelter inside. Then they started firing like anything outside. No? They have broken everything, whatever is possible here. That is what is happening. Is there any threat before? No, 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 nothing like that, nothing of the sort. Except that my son is a police officer. There is no sort of demand or not, no threat, nothing like that. How many members are there in the house? During, this? during that period? Okay, yes. uh, actually, my, myself is there, my wife is there, my elder son is there, and my daughter-in-law is there, and my daughter is there. Mm. And the one grandson, my grandson is there. So we have heard that uh, there is only one police officer in the family. Yes, 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 yes. All are doctors. All right. That was a horrific incident uh, that has been witnessed by uh, uh, Mr. K Dr. Kula Chandra. Dr. Kula Chandra, the father of uh, Mr. Amit Moirang Tam, the additional SP operations of Imphal West. Uh, Dr. M. Kula Chandra, we just heard his bite. There was massive firing. Uh, Lucky Boy, our reporter, is standing by in Imphal. Uh, Lucky, uh, the firing, uh, has it stopped now? What is the situation there? 
Yes, West Bay, the uh, firing incident stopped and the security forces, a huge number of security forces including state and uh, central arm security forces have also arrived and caught on the area, conducted search operations and uh, uh, conducted investigation at the, rest, uh, at the house of uh, additional SP Amit Moirang team regarding the uh, ambush or the attack. Uh, at his residence. Right. Uh, lucky, the additional SP Moiran Tem was not there at the residence at that time, right? Yes, his father disclosed that his son, Amit Moiran Tem, was. Uh, 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 Amit Moiran Tem went for, uh, for a meeting uh, uh, one hour back, but uh, still we can't confirm whether he was present or not. But his father disclosed that he went. Uh, for a meeting right. one hour now, back finally, before the incident occurred. Finally, Lucky, uh, final question. Was anybody injured? Was anybody injured in that in that firing? Yes, two civilian, uh, two civilian sustained injury. Uh, one is uh, on his uh, bullet injury on the uh, right leg and one is on the uh, wrist of uh, uh, right wrist of uh, uh, the civilians and they have been admitted to the Jenems hospital and treatment is going on but they are safe right now right uh, thank you very much for that update Northeast Live is the only channel bringing you this update uh, that exclusive interview with uh, a visibly uh, disturbed uh, Dr. M. Kula Chandra the father of Amit Moirang Tam the additional SP operations of Imphal West and uh, and as his father said apart from the fact that his son was a police is a police officer there was no other demand or threat to the family uh, let me go, let us go back to the debate uh, mr paulinal haukip uh, you know you you were making a very important point and everybody is saying that uh, particularly Dr. Bimola Khoizam is saying that Prime Minister can easily take an initiative to call all the BJP leaders at least to start with, not to talk about all parties. Now, my question is, who is now going to take the initiative? Recently, you were part of a very important meeting that took place in Guwahati a few days ago, where the Naga and Kuki MLAs, Kuki Zo MLAs from Manipur met. Uh, what did you all discuss? Uh, I mean, I know you may not be able to uh, tell everything, but what was this meeting all about? Was it towards finding out ways and means to resolve the problem? Well, Wasbir, uh, before I come to that, uh, it is very unfortunate to see uh, the violence that you have just, uh, that your reporter has just uh, reported. Uh, this is the result of uh, a chief minister letting an evil genie out of the bottle. And the central government seemingly uh, tasking him to catch it back on his own. Now, if the chief minister has failed for 10 months, uh, I think the only person or the only authority that can take a meaningful, uh, workable, effect, uh, effective initiative would be the central government leadership, uh, the Home Minister or the Prime Minister. And I agree with Professor Kojam that it is for the center to take the initiative, not uh, some meeting between Kuki and Naga MLAs or Kuki and Maite MLAs alone. There has to be, no. like I said, no. like I said earlier in the in the in, the, in, the, in your show, right. if a bully uh, beats up a boy in a class. The class teacher or the headmaster has to intervene. Headmaster not has leave, to intervene. Not leave but, the, the students to sort it out themselves. Yes, but but as a BJP leader, there are you are not the only BJP leader representing the hill people in Manipur, not at all. the hill districts. Now there are others. Now now a lot of people might ask you this question: whether as a BJP leader you have failed to convince your high command to hold such a meeting. I must admit on national television that I have failed because we have been knocking on the doors of the Home Minister, we have been knocking on the doors of the Prime Minister and we have not been given a chance to uh, apprise them of the situation and the possible way forward that we, that, that we have on our minds. So yes, we have failed. What would be your appeal? I'm coming to everybody else for their final comments. What would be your appeal as an elected representative? What will be your appeal? Uh, do you think there is a there is still a definite chance of resolution of this problem through talks? I am quite aware of the demand for a uh, separate administration 
or even an union territory by the Kuki groups. I'm aware of that. But apart from that will come later. But first, peace has to prevail. Uh, you have been uh, uh, living, uh, I mean, uh, quite cordially for generations. Now, what do you think the situation has reached an irreparable point, the divide? Yes, honestly, if you ask me, uh, the situation has reached a point of no return because for reconciliation, uh, the intervention should have come seven months, eight months earlier. Now we are in the tenth month, and sensitivities or emotions have gone so deep. People have been hurt so much, and the hatred has grown so much. Now, Wasbir, in between that, I would like to point something out. The central government seems to still treat the problems in Manipur as a, as a security problem. It is not. It is a political problem and needs to be resolved politically. And that is precisely what I was trying to tell you. There has been a history of denial of rights to the tribals as a whole and also the immediate injustice of maligning the Kuki community by the chief minister, no less than the chief minister himself. Now, if you look at the war on drugs, Mr. Birain Singh's war on drugs began only after Brinda has established the nexus between the drug cartels and the chief minister's family. Now, that sort no, of are, diversionary these are, tactics these are, these is are not going to help the state. These are serious allegations uh, that will require a different debate, Mr. Paudan al -Haka. I don't have much time. Uh, otherwise, I would have allowed you to speak. No, uh, let me, let me we, ha to, we have to un uh, unravel the truth to, to find a way to we, peace. We, and we, we have to establish I have made justice. A, I have made a beginning. Without with, justice, there is no made peace. A, Mr. Yes, I have made a beginning today with this discussion, uh, everybody, all the panelists. And I think we should continue this kind of a discussion. Uh, a lot of people may be skeptical about television debates, but, but you never know. Television debate, after all, all of you are extremely influential and eminent voices this might impact the society. Let me quickly go. I don't have much time. Let me quickly go to Dr. Dr. Homen Tongzam. Dr. Homen Tongzam, uh, the people, the human race, all humans, all people live on hope. Have you lost hope or do you think things can still come, come back on track? No, I still have hope. Many people do hold on to hope. The Nagakuki conflict went on for around five years, 1992 to 1997. And everybody thought these two communities, communities would, you know, would never come together. But, but, but it's a, politics is also about possibility. We cannot only talk about the impossible. As I said, the language of violence needs to be given up. There has to be another form of communication, keeping away the hatred inside. And politicians are different from us. We can look at the world as a humanity. Neither, you know, making another community smaller or bigger because we have been like that. Colors, academicians are like that. Right. As responsible teachers, right. we only right. dream of a world and we believe in the possibility and we still hold on to hopes. Absolutely. Thank all of us. communities have demonstrated that. All of us, all of us hold on to hope. Final comments from you, uh, Dr. Tankolal Haukip, very, very briefly. Final comments. You know, uh, the violence in Manipur would stop as soon as the radicalized groups like the Arambai Tingol, Methi Lipon, who are often backed by the insurgent groups, stop attacking Kuki villages. That's the only. Uh, you know, situation and uh, the state should stop, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, into this violence through certain implicit, uh, you know, actions. And right. uh, I would also argue that, uh, you know, throughout I have argued that uh, the disparity uh, has to be addressed. You know, uh, right. in the last 14 days, in the last 14 days, in Chorizampur, the relief camps, the district administration has not. Uh, you know, uh, 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 given out the full relief materials. 
see these are small materials down people who manage this relief camps are running pillar to post for the nations and other contributions to run this relief camps so just before uh, just because some people uh, you know uh, ha- committed violence against the district administration and uh, uh, you know uh, arson right. in uh, the dc office right. why could you uh, just deny right. internet right i got your point i got your your yeah, yeah, absolutely really absolutely so these are the small disparities but it disparities whether uh, of all kinds of disparities all kinds of disparities towards the affected people my point is, i would go take it a little further all kinds of disparities towards the affected people whether they are cookies or whether they are metes must stop and the government will be responsible for that final comments from you dr bimola koizam you know one thing is very clear to me that it's very unfortunate for the indian state to create a small space in manipur as if it is like a banana republic and you know everybody is armed so i think the indian state must reclaim its legitimate monopoly of the legitimate use of right. physical force and they must rein in this violence and <clears throat> and do the necessary and when we talk about it i would not like to communalize these situations when i say armed groups it is a cutting across communities it must be reined in and the political class should take over the uh, the state of affairs i mean it should not be allowed to privatize the violence the state political class must come together or whatever grievances that they have i think even the second world war you know ended on the table no war ended on the battlefield per se absolutely and and this is indian citizens remember that as long as we are part of the same country this is nonsensical to speak that we can't live together we will be working together in various organizations be their army parliament or or you know university Absolutely. system so i yeah. think there is this this particular outlook must be there for that the beginning part should be the state should claim is the monopoly of the legitimate use of physical force and rein in this violence and Absolutely. i think the political class must begin their talk whatever violence they have be, among leadership they ab- should resolve Absolutely. Do not. My appeal is: do not make the poor citizens and ordinary citizens, uh, you know, scapegoat for for the political drama. This is tragedy. Yes. And you, you must remember that in the loss of I, life has uh, has as as something that is has never seen in this country. I cannot. I and cannot agree with you more, Professor Bimola. Because I'm I've completely run out of time. Mm-hmm. I'd like to thank each one of you. for taking time out to be in this discussion and i would take this opportunity to request each one of the panelists esteemed panelists to have been in this debate that we will continue with this discussion and i hope in the days ahead uh, people like professor bimola koizam or professor thankolal haukip and others and, and dr homen thangzam <clears throat> and we have a politic polit on the lone political leader paul hankip will take the initiative to sit together irrespective of whether anybody calls or not i think someone just have to take a said okay come to so and so neutral place let's have a chat i think that is the way and it can work wonders on that positive hope i end this discussion tonight i thank all my panelists for being on the show and the viewers for watching the program good night and goodbye বাটারবালা গুড ডে কিহর কারণে সুর টু পালে নেকি স্যার সুর নহয় সাহাওয়ালা নমস্কার স্যার সাহর লগত বেছি ভাল লাগে কারণ গুড ডে ইয়ামি বাটার আছে দেউতাই আমার কারণে কিমান পরিশ্রম করে কিমান গধুর ওজন উঠায় मजबूत मजबूत कर 
কৃষক সন্মানৰ উপহাৰ দি অনলাইন মণ্ডি খুলি ফসল বীমাৰ বীমা সুৰক্ষা বঢ়াই নানো ইউৰিয়াৰ ডাঙৰ শক্তি দি বীজৰ পৰা বজাৰ লৈকে মজবুত জুক হুতৰে মোৰ দেউতা মজবুত গটিকে দেখো মজবুত থ্যাংক ইউ মোদি জি হবলিকৃত কৃষক মোদি চৰকাৰৰ গ্যারান্টি কোমল সালৰ স্পেচিয়েলত কইও স্পেচিয়েল অফাৰ এতিয়া পাঁচ দুখৰ বিভেল সাবুন মাত্ৰ এক টকা বিভেল লুটছ অইল বিস্কুটত কালজিৰাৰ চমৎকার চা